going on guys this is jacob viral uh, today's video is going to be focusing on roundovers and why they're so important for your subwoofer box so whether you have a sealed enclosure ported enclosure bandpass fourth order sixth order eighth order sealed enclosure just any concept subwoofer enclosure for your vehicle roundovers or any form of smooth surface on corner points are really important for your system so that's what i'm going to be discussing today as i work on my box so if anybody hasn't already seen my build update so my build isn't the prettiest, but it works and it's concept behind it that I like to explain in my videos. So utilize this concept for your build. So I'm a small single tenant subwoofer box build. Um, as you guys can see, it's a pretty big motor. I use a lot of the 3M tape, two and a half inch aluminum foil tape. So people ask me about that. So the way I do my roundovers is with PVC pipes. So I go from three inch PVC all the way up to six inch PVC. I have a couple of different test pieces here as examples, and I literally just cut it in half and then screw some whole screws through it and make it happen. So there's a three inch, three and a half. And uh, well, I have some pieces from when I was working on my sixth order or my big fourth order 415s done before too. So anyway, but the concept of this video. So before I go forward, just want to say if you guys ever have questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer any questions you guys have about cardio in general. And um, if I say something wrong, go ahead and correct me because it's also teaching me. So one of my goals on this video is to, by the end of this video to have my roundover back on. So I had a roundover here and I immediately gained like 0.2 dB by having this roundover right here on the front of my box in this corner. So what happens is one thing you want to think about with your system is and it doesn't have to be PVC. You could easily round over, smooth this portion of it out. I could have done double baffle instead of single baffle here and then done a like um, three quarter inch um, round over bit on a router and smooth it over and then tape over it or just paint over it, gloss it. So anything that makes a uh, smooth surface for your sound pressure waves. So especially in the port concept. So like here, for example, the same thing I just mentioned, uh, this is double baffle. So if I wanted to add it a little bit of a, a fillet there so like a round over so same concept is if you had like a piece of port there it smooths the surface out so just like that it doesn't it gives you the concept that you can utilize for your system so see it works it's not the best but i'm telling you this kind of stuff you want to look into so whether you have a ported enclosure or a bandpass enclosure or even seal box this is what you want to do and it doesn't have to be like i mentioned pvc so anybody that builds your enclosures if you have the option to get a kerf port or some form of um additional added kerfs or any form of um i guess 45s in the corners and extra additional bracings extra baffles anything to add to your box you definitely want to choose those options and if you're building your box double baffle everything as well as make sure you do any form of pretty much round over instead of a sharp edge in the corners because what's happening is the way waves travel on this. So that's what I'm working on with this. So I'm not into heavy SPL, but I like to get the most out of everything. And especially when it comes to port adjustment, you want to have a big round over on those areas. So let me go ahead and work on this some, and I'll be talking my head away, giving y'all some more feedback information. So what I did was I cut this length to size on the length of my box. It's a really big box for a 10 inch. And um, just started screwing some screws into it and kind of made it work. So the biggest concept with this is to make sure that this this doesn't vibrate and it allows the sound wave from the port to roll over instead of kind of hit a sharp edge and that gives you a different sound frequency response as well and that also closes in your the back of my baffle a little bit as well so instead of my baffle height being this high from wood height it goes to this height so i literally go up about an inch a little over an inch um, with pressure build up so you can easily test that in your system as well different heights of pressure build up behind your enclosure and then you can literally try different concepts so imagine me adding a couple two by fours in here and slowly increase this and decrease this and you'll be surprised at the re return output you'll get by closing in your back wall same concept goes with wall built guys as you close in let's say the back of the side panels on your sides if you didn't seal them off and you started sealing them off slowly so you get to your baffle you'll notice you might start getting louder obviously common sense because you're closing in to contain pressure in the cabin but the same concept goes for no wall builds and also with port enclosures and just port in general so you're closing things off 
can affect output and it that output can be a gain or a loss so you can get louder or quieter it's just you have to have meter uh some form of decibel reading result to do that plus you can have an audible difference you can tell by ear but it's a lot harder that way all right anyway enough talking there so what i'm about to do is get some screws in here and get this going so if you guys have any questions ever just let me know i hope this answered some questions there for that so i'll probably screw this off camera i don't need to have it on camera but that's the concept i wanted to explain in this video is how important roundovers and soft edges over corner sharp edges are for your enclosure so i've already done the result videos in previous videos you can watch on adding the roundovers to see the result difference on my port as well as the box so and then i'm looking into doing some roundovers maybe over here as well um, I could just use a router too and do the, the smooth radius, but I probably won't do it back here. It's not as critical as by the port and on the back end of your no wall build. Um, anywhere where you got your most of your tra your output from, which is your port area, that's the most important area for you to look into improvements on your vehicle and your system. So if I put a round over here, this isn't going to matter if I had some kind of smooth surface. It would matter to an extent but it's not going to matter as much. It's just like whenever you block sound waves in certain areas, if somebody's sitting in your back seat or in your seat, they're blocking some of those sound waves. So that does affect the way vehicle resonates as well as how much sound output you get. So there's some of these things I'm mentioning that are key words that are really important that you want to consider, um, especially when you want to get maximum output from your system. So that's all I got in this video. Thanks for watching everybody. Like the video, subscribe. And I hope I taught y'all something today with how important it is to have smooth surfaces and roundovers on your subwoofer box edges. So don't worry about how it looks. It's not the prettiest, but it works for me. And that's what matters, what works for you. So look into your subwoofer box, your wall or porter enclosure or sealed enclosure, just enclosure in general. And if you have any sharp edges, smooth them out. Use a router or use a sander or sandpaper or what I do, PVC pipe or something to smooth out that surface and make it so it's not a sharp edge. And that same goes for in an enclosure. So in these corners, I could add something in there in these corners of my box and that would eliminate some of my um, dead space. So air kind of gets stuck in those corners. So if you add something in there to kind of have a build up, that can also help. So that's something else to look into in a future video. So I'll see y'all next time.